how did I become a follower of Esau Masih? My journey is essentially a journey from religion to redemption. I would characterize my journey in the faith and this process of becoming a follower of Esau Masih as a journey from ritual to reconciliation. And this is very important because I was raised in the precepts of the religion of Islam. I grew up embracing Islam with all of my heart as best as a child could in a Muslim home, having grown up in Senegal, West Africa, of a Lebanese family, a Shia Muslim, and following best as we could the precepts of the Quran and the Hadith. Our home was characterized by uh, religion in every sense of the word. So, why would I need anything more than what we had? I never felt the need to have more. Until the crises of life that I experienced and that all of us experienced at one point or another may bring us to face to face or do bring us actually face to face with some of the great questions of life. Who am I? Why was I born? What is the sense? What is the meaning of my existence? Uh, why these problems? Why do we have these struggles? That's the nature of the human heart. To struggle with answers and to look to the mercy of God to say, Lord, why? Lord, why was it that when I was just a little child, my parents experienced divorce and we had a broken home? Uh, why did we go through struggles in the context in which I grew up where someone from my background would despise a black man and why though we were all supposed to be Muslims we were not getting along I came very early to the understanding that even with all of the noble talk we had about Allah and about religion in the home all of that did not shut the door to the misery and the havoc that sin brings into a family and into a young life. I experienced all of this and then I embarked on the task of reforming my life thinking that all that I had experienced, all of the bad things that I went through had been because I was not walking like a Muslim should. And I began to reform my life by being more careful, reading the Quran, trying to keep the traditions, of course, ritual and everything else that was required. But you know what happened to me? The more I embraced this, the more I tried, the more I began to discover that something simply was not gelling, something was not working. Was the problem just me? Was it that I wasn't doing it right? I began to look at others. I began to look at anyone who called himself a Muslim, whether he called himself a fundamentalist or he called himself a failure. From one F to the other, I looked at the whole gamut of Muslims and every type possible and I noticed the same thing in their life that was in my life. That there was no assurance of the forgiveness of sin, that there was fundamentally no peace, although we constantly spoke of peace that honestly in my heart as well as the heart of my Muslim friends then though we said five times a day and a thousand times in other occasions Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim we were never very sure that Allah was on our side we did not know what he decreed for us maybe he decreed evil for us maybe he decreed good for us we did not know we had no assurance of anything and in that context struggle the struggle to, to to reform one's life became a lonely one an arduous one a difficult one at which not only I fail but honestly all the Muslims I knew were failing at it we all know how to have a nice facade of religiosity and speak eloquently to issues if we have to but the truth of the matter is that Allah sees our hearts and he saw mine and I looked at my heart and I knew that I was not finding the answer in religion as such. But what is there more than the deen? 
What is there more than iman? iman? What is there that I needed that would take me to the next level, to the next step? I did not know. Where would I turn? What Isa al-Masih came to put before us was not just a set of rules or laws or things that we can bring forth as meritorious deeds such as whether it's we call it prayer or giving alms or anything else he came to teach us that beyond religion we needed relationship and relationship cannot happen between us and Allah to be in the true peace and the true Islam in the true Salaam we cannot have that without there being first a reconciliation this is what is taught to have reconciliation reconciled in the heart. This is what I learned through the message of Isha al-Masih that someone shared with me. That person, in fact, the first time that that person talked to me, I, I was very angry with that person saying, do not talk to me about such religious issues. Uh, uh, who are you? And, and that's when I learned that there's a great deal of difference between those who would say that they are following the Bible and those who are true followers of Isha al-Masih. The man talking to me was a true follower of Isa al-Masih. I remember the first time that I heard someone give a khutbah about the Injil. And the man that was preaching that word, I shall never forget how he held up that book, the Bible, that comprises all of the holy revelations of Allah, from the Torah to the Injil, and began to say, Allah is the one who gives promises and keeps them and he is the one who assures us that we can count on what he says that was a comforting word for me because he was saying that there are things that Allah says that cannot be simply trifled with that give actually reassurance for I grew up in a system where I was never sure if Allah was truly for me. I was taught that Allah is closer to me than my jugular vein. But when I went to the Quran to read that, I found out that this is not speaking about a tender, loving nearness to me, but that it was a warning to those who actually were not being obedient. So I was in fear rather than at peace. That day, among the promises that I heard, was the one that is given to us in the book of Acts, in the fourth chapter, that says to us, That is, there is nothing, no other name under heaven and upon this earth that has been given whereby we can be saved. But that if we believe, He will forgive us. That He is the one who did give his life as a ransom, the sacrifice that Allah provided. That belief pierced my heart. It wasn't something I was looking for. I wasn't thinking. And thank God, this was not an invitation for me, so to speak, to switch religions. That's not what it's about. It's not about religion. It's about reconciliation. This is the message of the gospel of the Injil. This is what uh, Isa al-Masih brings us reconciliation so today to anyone who listens to me I want to testify that indeed the Injil is true when it tells us la ilaha illallah wa la fi ghair wa fi bayna wa bayna Allah illa isa al-insan isa al-masih al-insan that is there is no God but one God and there is no mediator between man and God except Jesus Christ the man and so that is something today that I want to assure any hearer that if in faith believing one accepts what the Injil says you find the solution my life was transformed by that truth what I could not find just through the precepts of religion and it doesn't matter how you call that religion it could have been any religion what i could not find through the precepts of religion i found through ransom redemption in the name of Isa al-Masih i found reconciliation with god that transformed my life and gave me true peace 
That is why I want to follow Isa al-Masih and why I continue to follow Isa al-Masih and why I proclaim to anyone, please be reconciled with God in the name of Isa al-Masih and be a follower of His.